Ladies and gentlemen, a very good day to you all and a very warm welcome to Government House Yarralumla. My name is Mark Fraser. I'm the Governor General's Official Secretary. As this badge around my neck signifies with its crossed quills, I also serve as Secretary of the Council for the Order of Australia. The Council, of course, makes recommendations on appointments and awards in the Order's General Division to the Governor General, who is Chancellor of the Order and also the Principal Knight of the Order. I also have the privilege of serving as Secretary to the Australian Bravery Decorations Council, the body which makes recommendations to the Governor General on Bravery Awards. I would particularly like to acknowledge among our distinguished guests this afternoon, Mr Scott Bookholtz, representing the Prime Minister, Senator the Honourable Don Farrell, representing the Leader of the Opposition, Vice Admiral Tim Barrett, representing the Chief of Defence Force and Chief of Navy. Major General Rick Burr, representing the Chief of Army. Air Marshal Leo Davies, Chief of Air Force. Mr Bernard Wright, representing the Chair of the Council for the Order of Australia. The Honourable John Lloyd, Commissioner of the Australian Public Service Commission. Mr David Foote, representing the Commissioner of the ACT Emergency Services. The Honourable Margaret Reid, representing the Order of Australia Association. Mr Andrew Kendall, National President of the Australian Bravery Association, and Mr Mark Hoskinson, President of the Bravery Institute of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a special day, not only for recipients, but for their families, friends, and the community that we share. It's a day when we celebrate a diverse range of impressive achievement and service. As staff at Government House, my colleagues and I are privileged to play a small part in the recognition and celebration of that achievement. We hope that we can make this afternoon an occasion you will all recall with pride for a long time to come. Shortly, I'll invite you to stand as His Excellency the Governor-General joins us. Please remain standing for the singing of the first verse of the National Anthem. And yes, we do expect you to sing along. The words are on page three in your program. The investiture will then proceed in the order listed in your programs. Once I read their names and citations, the recipients will enter the room from the doorway on my right. And after they've been invested, they will leave through the centre aisle uh, to take their seats at the back of the room. At this point, you might like to show your appreciation with some applause. At the conclusion of today's ceremony, the Governor General will then address us. And then I'll in ask all recipients to join the Governor General on the state entrance steps for a formal photograph. Could I ask others to just remain behind for a few moments while that photograph takes place before joining us out on the, uh, the Vista lawn, uh, in fact, the lakeside lawn for refreshments this afternoon. Finally, housekeeping. Uh, please, no photos during the ceremony this afternoon. We have an official photographer with us today. You're very welcome to use your cameras at the reception following this afternoon's investiture. We're also broadcasting live to viewers around Australia and the world. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge the generous support of staff and students from the Canberra Institute of Technology, who do a wonderful job making this possible. In the few moments before we begin, we begin. if you want to send a message to family and friends, uh, gg.gov.au will get the live broadcast up right away. Please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask one of our staff and enjoy your afternoon. I'll be back with you in a few moments. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of His Excellency, the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia.
We've golden soil and our home is good by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts, all beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. Thank you. Please be seated. Your Excellency, to be presented with the insignia of his appointment as a companion in the General Division, Dr Gregory Clark. For eminent service to science as a physicist, researcher and academic in the area of technological development and communications, to business as an innovator and enabler of emerging technologies and to the promotion of philanthropy. Dr. Clark is unarguably Australia's leading authority on the commercial development of satellite communications. He's distinguished himself through pioneering work in a stellar career that has pushed the frontiers of science, particularly in the field of digital communication and technology. He is rare in that he has bridged two spheres of influence, namely the world of science and the world of business. Dr. Clark's contributions to research, education and entrepreneurial innovation have been of great value to our nation and across the globe. He has set a very fine example for others to emulate and today we salute him. Dr. Gregory Clark appointed a companion of the order. Good afternoon. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank now, oh no, you don't get away so oh. quickly. <laughs> uh, by my calculation, there's at least from the 80s onwards, uh, you've been president or chairman or a member of uh, about 18 Australian or overseas entities related to scientific endeavour. You've uh, been given any number of awards, both within Australia and, uh, here and overseas, and I think there's 130 plus peer-reviewed papers that uh, people quote from. Is that right? Yes, that's you've correct, been, thank you. you. You've been busy, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you're missing had, out on? I've had is, a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you've made a huge contribution. Congratulations. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> Appointed a companion in the General Division, the late Miss Betty Cuthbert, to be accepted by her twin sister, Miss Mari Johnston, and her son, Betty's nephew, Mr Peter Johnston. For eminent service to athletics at the national and international level, particularly as a gold medalist at the Melbourne and Tokyo Olympic Games, and as a role model, fundraiser, and advocate for research into a cure for multiple sclerosis. Miss Cuthbert is an icon of our nation's sporting history. Her sporting achievements in athletics are legendary, have helped place Australia firmly on the international sporting stage. She worked tirelessly in her role as a dedicated advocate and ambassador for Multiple Sclerosis Research Australia and her efforts have helped to advance the prevention, better treatment and efforts to find a cure for this debilitating disease. Ms Cuthbert was a truly remarkable individual, a role model for young women and girls and a beacon for those suffering from multiple sclerosis. We are deeply indebted to her. Ms Marie Johnston and Mr Peter Johnston accept the appointment of a companion of the order on behalf of their late sister and auntie, Miss Betty Cuthbert. Thank you for being here today in honour of your late sister. Thank you very much. And now I'll give you the 
the insignia. I wonder if I could get you to hold it open. Yes. Both of you. There's something about a famous Australian sports person, uh, especially one le uh, from a golden age, the golden girl, uh, that uh, makes our hearts sing. And I'm old enough, of course, to remember watching her running and it was just wonderful. We, a bit like Cathy Freeman of a later time, but the story life of Betty Cuthbert, uh, which has got this end point where she battles so uh, wonderfully against that debilitating disease. I believe there's a, uh, a room in her honour now at the okay. uh, MS Centre, is that right? Yes, and at the um, Melbourne Cricket Ground. There you are. I think I might have seen that. Uh, but uh, also she was the first person inducted into the International Athletics Hall of Fame. And we think for our, our golden girl, that's a wonderful thing. Now she's been recognised by her nation. Okay, thank, thank you for you. being here today. Thank you. Appointed a companion in the General Division, Professor Nicholas Talley, for eminent service to medical research and to education in the field of gastroenterology and epidemiology as an academic, author and administrator at the national and international level and to health and scientific associations. Professor Talley has had a stellar career as an academic and researcher in the disciplines of gastroenterology and epidemiology. He is highly esteemed as an academic and leader who has earned a well-deserved international reputation. His passion and dedicated dedication have resulted in seminal discoveries and breakthroughs which have revolutionised the treatment of patients. He's also been a powerful change agent in the development of medical professionals. Professor Talley's unwavering commitment to improving the health outcomes of people both here and overseas is most noteworthy of our highest recognition. Professor Nicholas Talley appointed a Companion of the Order. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Now, you are one of the most highly quoted people. You've, uh, amongst the most, there's about 400 scientists in the world who are the most quoted and, uh, and referred to, and you're one of them, one of that, those 400, which is, in this group, uh, mighty impressive. Over a 1,000 peer-reviewed articles, um, and you've, you are the uh, Pro Vice-Chancellor research, global research at uh, Newcastle Uni That's and uh, a laureate from the same place. Well, we're mighty pleased you're here today to be recognised by Australia. Thank you very much, sir. Well done. <laughs> Appointed an officer in the General Division, Professor Martin Banwell for distinguished service to science education as an academic, author and researcher, particularly in the field of synthetic organic chemistry, to scientific institutes and as a mentor of emerging scientists. Professor Banwell has made an extensive contribution to Australia's connection with the world community of chemistry, particularly in the area of research for over 30 years. He is an internationally recognised leader in chemical synthesis and his research has been recognised with numerous major national and international awards. Beyond his academic contributions, Professor Banwell has worked extensively with industry to develop methods for synthesising natural products of pharmaceutical value, thus reducing their cost and the impact on the environment. Professor Martin Banwell appointed an Officer of the Order. Good afternoon. Now, you've also got a very, uh, you, you've been awarded uh, about uh, 10 awards by seven overseas nations, including Australia, but uh, there's a full range of people who've 
uh, cited your work and, and uh, given you recognition for it. But like your predecessor just a moment or two ago, you were also about the top 1% of people being cited in the world for your, your work. Uh, you, a very large number of peer-reviewed papers. Um, so again, you are an absolute leader in the field and Australia thanks you for your service and asks you to continue it. Thank you, Your Excellency. Yeah. Appointed an officer in the General Division, Emeritus Professor Michael Coper. For distinguished service to legal education and to the law as an academic, author and administrator through advisory roles and to safety standards in the transport industry. Professor Coper is in the vanguard of legal academics who have brought a distinctively Australian perspective to the study of constitutional and administrative law. His pioneering work on the problems of the interpretation and application of various sections of the Constitution is recognised as having been highly influential. He is also an exceptional communicator for legal audiences and the public at large through contributions to the media and through his many publications. Professor Coper is one of our nation's foremost legal scholars and today we acknowledge such. Emeritus Professor Michael Coper appointed an Officer of the Order. Good afternoon. Thank you. Well, Thank you very much. Now, you were the Robert Garron, uh, Dean of the uh, Law Faculty yeah. and the Robert Garron uh, Professor at the, uh, at the, the Faculty of Law at ANU. Mm. Um, you uh, also, of course, um, co-author or editor of about uh, five publications. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I like is that, uh, apart from th that very eminent mm -hmm. history, you've been the chair of the Truck Safe Accreditation mm -hmm. Council. That's right. Since, mm -hmm. well, for a while. 20 years. 20 years mm -hmm. and still doing it. Mm -hmm. We've got 530,000 trucks in Australia that carry two mm -hmm. billion tonnes. Mm -hmm. That all comes from that time when they had the big truck smashes. So, whereas you, you work in the very specialised area of the law, uh, this is a wonderful contribution you make to the Australian community. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Appointed an officer in the military division, Major General Richard Burr for distinguished service in the implementation of significant reform and the realisation of strategic capabilities within the Australian Defence Force. General Burr has demonstrated exceptional leadership during his appointments, particularly as the Deputy Chief of Army. Through his personal dedication and professionalism, he's delivered significant and enduring reform in the culture and performance of our nation's army. General Burr's service in these diverse and strategic roles has strengthened Australia's relationship with major allies and regional partners and has resulted in lasting benefits for the Australian Defence Force. Major General Richard Burr appointed an Officer of the Order. Good afternoon. How are you? Good, thanks. Let me get that straightened up a bit. Uh, won't surprise people here to know that I've uh, know this chap rather well. Led the SAS regiment in 2003 uh, in Iraq, uh, which was a shooting war, and, mm -hmm. and he and his uh, men did extremely well, and has been uh, an officer of huge value to the military ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, although I, th I think you at one stage showed an aberration where you were assisting the Collingwood Football Club. <laughs> uh, and recently, Mr. John Bertrand uh, has laid the, he's the chair of Swimming Australia, has laid some of the motivation of our very successful Com Games swimming team uh, in, at the feet of people like General Burr. Uh, General Burr has been the Deputy Chief of Army and that is a tremendously important job and it was therefore no surprise whatsoever when he was named to be the next Chief of Army. Congratulations.
appointed an officer in the military division, Major General Ian Westwood, for distinguished service to the Australian Defence Force as Chief Military Judge of the Australian Military Court and Chief Judge Advocate of the Superior Disciplinary Tribunal System. General Westwood has led the Australian Defence Force's disciplinary tribunal system through a period of significant legislative change with determination to ensure continuity of the administration of justice without fear or favour. General Westwood's contribution to the ADF's discipline law system has earned him the trust, confidence and respect of the government, the legal community, command and the national and international military justice community. Major General Ian Westwood appointed an officer of the order. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Very well, thanks, sir. Good to see you. No, no, no you stay here. Go ahead. <laughs> now, of course, uh, you joined the Army in uh, 1983. That's right. 83. And uh, first came to my attention when uh, he was the uh, senior uh, Army legal person on the Black Hawk disaster, 1996 crash, which claimed many lives. And, but after that, uh, we became personally known when you led the detention management unit on my behalf and for Interfet in East Timor to ensure uh, the scrupulous management of any detainees that we had. I was most grateful for that. Uh, that service you provided. But since then, you've been continuing in the military justice system uh, and the military court, which didn't last all that long, but then as Judge Advocate General. And you are truly a servant of the Army, the Australian Defence Force and Australia. Congratulations, Ian. Sir, thank you very much. to science in the field of entomology as a researcher and to the forestry industry, both nationally and internationally. Dr Bedding stands out as one of our most imaginative and creative scientists. His many contributions during a career spanning over 50 years have consolidated Australia's standing globally as a research leader. Dr Bedding's seminal scientific discoveries have resulted in the delivery of ongoing environmental and economic benefits for Australian agribusiness and the world's forestry industry. And today we acknowledge such. Dr Robin Benning, Benning appointed a member of the order. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Congratulations, look this way. Now, you developed nematodes as a, uh, a protocol against uh, insects that are dangerous to health and to uh, livestock and production. And uh, that's been described as having an equivalent and dramatic and widespread um, application like the black box, the cochlear ear transplant, uh, all of those uh, Wi-Fi, all of those sort of life-changing uh, or, or industry-changing uh, initiatives, nematodes. So that's fantastic. You've worked for the CSIRA for a very long time. You're still with them? Uh, going as an honorary, yes. OK. Well, I mean, uh, we're, we're thrilled you're here today amongst these folks similarly being recognised in many cases. So we can say thank you. Well done. Thank you, Rex. Appointed a member in the General Division, Mr Michael Shabrook, for significant service to the chiropractic profession through leadership in education, accreditation and development programs. Mr Shabrook has made an outstanding contribution through his leadership of a range of professional chiropractic organisations, particularly in relation to the development of accreditation and competency standards. He's had a positive impact on public protection by ensuring that all chiropractors are suitably trained and qualified to practice in a competent and ethical manner. Mr Shabrook's achievements are to be commended and we do so today. 
Mr Michael Shabrook, appointed a member of the order. Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you. Well done. Now, you've been a chiropractor since 1994. That's right. And you've been president of the International Chiropractic Education Body. For about three or four years. And, of course, you do the same sort of function here in Australia for the Australian body. That's right. Yeah, so uh, this whole idea of educating the community about the uh, opportunities and perhaps limitations, but uh, certainly all about how, chiro uh, how chiropractors uh, on their, their ailments can be of great assistance, having people understand. Well, you're a central figure in the practice. Well done. Thank you very much. Congratulations. a member in the General Division, Associate Professor Jennifer Thompson, for significant service to medicine as a general practitioner, to medical education, to professional organisations and to the community. Dr Thompson has had a lasting impact on the local community of the ACT for over four decades. She served not only as a medical doctor providing clinical services, but also through humanitarian contributions in clinics and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health services. Dr Thompson's passion for teaching and mentoring of junior general practitioners and medical students serves to inspire us all. Associate Professor Jennifer Thompson appointed a member of the order. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Congratulations. Yeah. Forty years in general practice. It must have seen to have flown past straight from I kindy into uh, <laughs> <laughs> a long time. That's it. Yeah. But you were also you had offices within the ACT division of general practitioners, haven't you? You were the chair, and then you've been on the board since. Um, so, uh, and you also got academic standing, as we heard from your title, uh, with the ANU. So, in all respects, you're that most marvellous of people. You're a general practitioner who minister to the everyday needs and sometimes the life-saving needs of uh, citizens in this community. Thank you very much. Well done. Appointed a member in the military division, Brigadier John McKenzie. For exceptional performance of duty, in the role of Chief of Joint Plans within Headquarters Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve. Brigadier McKenzie has consistently demonstrated superior professional skills, judgment and dedication to duty in a career spanning over 30 years. In his role with Operation Inherent Resolve, he inspired his diverse coalition team to consistently deliver the highest quality concepts and plans to maintain coalition focus in the campaign against Daesh. Brigadier McKenzie provided exemplary stewardship of Australian national interests in the execution of his role. Brigadier John McKenzie appointed a member of the order. Good to see you again. Good afternoon. Thank you. Yeah. 1984 you started? I did. Sir. Yeah, I remember it well. Um, <laughs> you were staff officer to the vice chief in 2011, yes. but you've had your shares, your ribbons will denote of uh, overseas service, East Timor and the Middle East, of course. Uh, and in Inherent Resolve, you drew everything together and did a magnificent job uh, in seamlessly weaving the assistance provided by foreigners uh, to the troops you were supporting to the point where they could start to win against Daesh. And that winning process continues. We're proud of you. Well done. Thank you, Your Excellency. It's a pleasure to be part of the Just Fund. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Nicholas Carmody, for service to local government and to the community of Yass. Mr Carmody has made an outstanding contribution to the Yass region. For more than two decades, he served the people of the Yass Valley with distinction in a multitude of areas, 
including local government, sport, commerce and aged care services. Mr Carmody is highly respected for his commitment to his community and is most deserving of our community's recognition. Mr Nicholas Carmody awarded the Medal of the Order. Good afternoon, how are you? Yeah, good morning. There we go. Well done, look this way. You're the longest serving mayor of the, uh, of yes. Guilty. Yeah, 99 until 2012. When I originally read the biographical note, it said longest serving mayor of yes since 1873, and I thought, that's a long time. Uh, <laughs> but it's only 99 until 2012. Yeah. But you are the typical person of your community involved in everything. Golf, rugby union, uh, rugby league. Uh, you're involved in the men's shed. You're involved in the aged care uh, uh, facilities in, um, in the Yass area. So you're the lifeblood of the community. We're Good very on. delighted to recognise you today. Well done. Thanks, man. Cheers. Yeah. Awarded the medal in the general division, Mr. David Cossart, for service to youth through Scouts. Mr. Cossart has been an integral part of Scouting in the ACT for over three decades. He's highly respected for his contributions and support and has made a lasting and positive impact on Scouting as a result of his dedicated effort. Mr. Cossart leads by example, is well respected by his peers and has provided exceptional service to the community. And he is, of course, most worthy of our nation's recognition this afternoon. Mr. David Cossart, awarded the Medal of the Order. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Now, you've been on the national training team for Scouts for quite a while. You're the Deputy Principal of the, uh, Institute, of the uh, Institute. Institute of Training. And isn't it your project, this 1,800 or 1,500 scouts on the uh, Sci Scouts? Yes, yes. So these are scouts that you identify with an interest in science and you expose them to uh, projects or get them to get involved in projects? And we've utilised that now to look at the full STEM program. Fantastic. Science, technology, engineering and maths. Modern scouts, well done. Congratulations, keep Thank it up. You. Thank you. Yeah. Awarded the medal in the general division, Mrs. Alpha Gregory, for service to music in the Australian Capital Territory. Mrs. Gregory is a well-known member of Canberra's musical life through her long service to the Woden Valley Youth Choir. We're fortunate to have artists with her passion and commitment as she's dedication has achieved so much as a music educator and through her encouragement and support of young musicians. Mrs Gregory shows us that one person rolling up their sleeves can truly make a difference. Mrs Alpha Gregory awarded the Medal of the Order. Good afternoon, how are you? Fine, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You were the artistic director for quite a number of years, up till 2016. 20 uh, years. 20 years. Um, and eight CDs, uh, Two overseas tours? Uh, Korea and... You count Tasmania? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> she didn't mean it. <laughs> no, two overseas tours, uh, USA and Korea, I think. Was that right? Correct. OK. Mm. Uh, and any number of national tours. And the uh, Canberra Carols by Candlelight is the second biggest in the nation, mm. second only second to Melbourne. Second longest. Uh, and, and, yeah, well, it, it's a fabulous event. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you very much. And we know that you'll continue your association with a good group of people. Thank you. Will do. All the best. Thank you. <laughs> Awarded the medal in the general division, Mr Timothy Holt, for service to the broadcast media, particularly through radio. Mr Holt is a well-known local and regional radio broadcaster. The community of South East New South Wales has benefited from his respectful, inclusive and generous demeanour, both on and off air. 
He's also given selflessly of his time in volunteering for community organisations and in supporting up and coming artists. Mr Timothy Holt awarded the Medal of the Order. That's a Timor East scarf, I recognise it instantly. It is. Well So you started your career back in 1969 as a DJ in Sydney, is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Did. And look, now you're an icon of your community around Bega and uh, there on the south coast there. Uh, you have this wonderful involvement with the uh, Bega unemployment group, unemployed group, which is to try to mobilise people who are struggling to find uh, uh, work. And the other thing is what Mumbala Da singers, what on earth are they? A group of uh, uh, immense choir. A men's choir. Oh, okay. Is that something to do with the way they sing Mumble Da? Or no, it's the name of the school. Oh, okay, right. Bad, so and yeah. what's the other one? Uh, that bunch of singers. That's right. Who is the, who's that bunch of singers? Uh, we we sing in Bega. Uh, yeah. A lady with, by the name of Dennis Calais. Yeah. There's a well-known name in Canberra. I believe it's this choir. Well, there's no stopping you. Well done. Yes, thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. <laughs> Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Peter McMahon, for service to veterans and their families. Mr McMahon has served and has tirelessly championed the wellbeing of veterans and their families in the Kuma Monaro region. He's dedicated thousands of hours to the veterans community and has been the driving force behind local Anzac Day commemorations. Mr McMahon has ensured that respect for and the memory of the diggers and the Anzac spirit remain strong. And today his nation recognises him. Mr Peter McMahon awarded the Medal of the Order. Hello Peter, Peter. how are you? Good Pleasure. to see you again. Pleasure to have served with one. Now you joined the army in 1961. One. Yeah, yep. Went to uh, with one hour hour first tour of duty. Yep. Sir. Okay, that was a tough one. And uh, yep. uh, joined the RSL in 1986. No, 66 when first come home. You were straight in. Yeah. Oh, well done. I was yeah. only out by 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but you've been in the RSL ever since. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about legacy? You joined that a little later. Yeah. About 95. About the 8th of June. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was the chairman of the Queen Bee and uh, Edmund Era Legacy Group. Yeah. At the same time as the president of the yeah. RSL sub-branch and the ex-services yeah. club. You epitomise what is great and best about the Return and Services League movement. Well done. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Jim Quick, for service to veterans and their families. Mr Quick is an inspired leader, ever willing to go the extra mile to help the ex-Navy and veteran community and their families. He encourages others to join in activities designed to provide camaraderie for elderly ex-service personnel, to save them from social isolation and to ensure they're well cared for when they're ill. Mr Quick is a role model of diligence and dedication to those who have served this nation and today we acknowledge him. Mr Jim Quick awarded the Medal of the Order. Good afternoon. Congratulations. I'm from the Senior Service. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well I heard that. <laughs> he says he's from the Senior Service, I didn't realise you were Army. Uh, <laughs> Royal Australian Navy 1964. Okay, served 20 years, and here you are uh, still serving, but in a different capacity. Uh, again, one of those stalwarts of the community who keeps volunteering. You've been driving those yellow food vans, haven't you? You used to come and pick up what you left. Well, I didn't leave much. I, my, <laughs> my mum told me, clean the plate. You can see that. But I understand that you pick up the food that was otherwise going to go to waste, and you make sure it goes to uh, needy people. That's typical of you, and uh, you've found a way to serve, even though you've taken off your uniform. Well done. Thank you, sir.
Awarded the medal in the general division, Mrs. Rochelle Towett, for service to the Indigenous community. Mrs. Towett is a proud Wanarura woman who has played a pivotal role in raising the profile of Indigenous leadership across Australia. For over a decade, thousands of Indigenous people would not have had the opportunity to build their skills, knowledge and confidence to become better leaders if it was not for her efforts. Mrs Towett has been an advocate for reconciliation and a powerful force for positive change in Australia. Mrs Rochelle Towett awarded the Medal of the Order. Good to see you again. Now you've already been given awards by other people, uh, three, at least three that I know about, but uh, where you and I know each other is from the Australian Indigenous Leadership Centre, where I think you're the business manager and then you're the chief executive, and now you're, uh, and that's a fabulous program and I still love to be involved in that, but there's this pipeline, tell me about pipeline. Executive recruitment for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, we don't have enough in yeah. the ASX. Okay. Executive recruitment of Indigenous folk into business, streams of business. Yes. And that's your passion that's going strongly? Absolutely. Well, this medal is to say thank you and I encourage you to keep going. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Glenn White, for service to public administration particularly to Australia-Nepal relations. Mr White was our ambassador in Nepal when the country was hit by devastating earthquakes in 2016. His leadership skills were vitally important in ensuring that the Australian government responded quickly to the natural disaster. He worked to assist the many Australians who sought help from the embassy in Kathmandu and played a key role in the delivery of our country's emergency humanitarian assistance after the quakes. Mr White displayed resilience in the very difficult circumstances and we acknowledge his contribution today. Mr Glenn White awarded the Medal of the Order. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thirty years of service you had in the Department of Foreign Affairs, or in various arms of government, but a very long time. You make it sound like a sentence. Well, <laughs> uh, still. Uh, this was the 25th of April uh, 2015, exactly. that earthquake hit. Exactly, 100th year anniversary of Gallipoli. That's it, and 7.8 on the scale. Yes. And, of course, we know devastating uh, in Nepal, uh, vast loss of life. You had to uh, ensure the safety or where the, the whereabouts of 1,525 mm. Australians or permanent residents and then render assistance to hundreds of Aussies and New, New Zealanders and what have you that were uh, yes. your, your parish. And then after that, you had to supervise the uh, direct and timely application of about $12, $13 million worth of aid. Indeed. And that's uh, a fantastic thing. Our, our envoys do that when needed, anywhere in the world. You happen to be Johnny on the spot and we're very proud of you. Thank, Thank you so you very much. much Thank you. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Graham Windsor, for service to parachuting. Mr Windsor has been a parachutist for almost five decades. He's an active participant in the sport as a master instructor, instructor examiner and competitor. Additionally, he fulfills high level executive roles with the national and international air sports federations. And today, Mr Wind Windsor's achievements are recognised by our nation. Mr Graham Windsor awarded the Medal of the Order. Good afternoon. There you go. Now, am I allowed to mention your age? 69? Yes. And you've done 7,000 jumps <laughs> and you're still over 100 a year. Yeah. And you used to be 7 foot 2. <laughs> <laughs> you were inducted into the International Hall of Fame for parachuting. 
and you are, of course, uh, very eminent in the Australian Association of Parachutists. So you are showing the way to people of all ages about uh, uh, this will to enjoy your recreation and to help others to do so. So may you be safe on every one of your subsequent jumps. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Awarded the medal in the military division, Captain Peter Ashworth, for meritorious service in the field of Navy aviation and project management. Captain Ashworth has demonstrated dedication and determination over a long Navy aviation career. Captain Ashworth's project management skills and contract management acumen has contributed significantly to the safe and efficient provision of maritime support and maritime combat helicopter capabilities to the Royal Australian Navy and the Australian Defence Force. Captain Peter Ashworth awarded the Medal of the Order. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Now, you joined as a boy, a boy sailor, didn't you? I did, sir. Yeah. 78? 78, January 78. Okay. And now you're the Deputy Commander of uh, the Fleet Air Arm. Is that right? That's right, sir. Okay. And I think one of your recent responsibilities was the competitive evaluation of what main weapon system helicopter would we get for our combatants. Is that right? That's right, sir. And you've chosen the Seahawk Ramio class. A fantastic uh, vehicle, if I could put it that way, and a very potent part of uh, the modern Navy's capability. You can feel very proud of that. Well done. Thank you, Rex. Your Excellency, we turn to Distinguished Service Decorations and awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service, Colonel Tony Archer, for distinguished performance of duty as the Chief of Future Operations while deployed on Operation High Road from June 2015 to July 2016. Colonel Archer demonstrated exceptional leadership as the preeminent operational planner for the Resolute Support Mission. He played a vital role in the development of strategic outcomes and policy frameworks that have ensured accountability and enabled the prioritisation of forces to achieve operational objectives. Through his superior efforts, the Afghan National Defence Forces have achieved strategic success in important combat operations. Colonel Tony Archer awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service. Hi, Tony. The 2016 fighting season in Afghanistan was something and this whole notion of what we do there is to actually help them to learn, develop and gain confidence and ultimately success. And there's a way of doing it which actually helps people to feel that confidence and you and your colleagues were masterly at that. I've spoken to uh, the President of Afghanistan, who is uh, high in his praise for the robust yet sensitive way in which the Aussies uh, uh, interact uh, with these people trying to do their best in the Afghan National Army. Well done. Thanks. Congratulations. I've ordered the commendation for distinguished service Lieutenant Colonel Peter Conroy, for distinguished performance of duty, providing security force assistance to the Afghan National Army 205th Artul Corps while deployed on Operation High Road. Colonel Conroy displayed professionalism and dedication to duty in assuming significant operational responsibilities as the Chief of Staff to the 205th Corps advisory team. His leadership and teamwork were key in ensuring that advisory efforts aligned with the strategic development objectives of the mission. Colonel Conroy's achievements are in keeping with the finest traditions of the Australian Defence Force. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Conroy awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service. Hi, Peter. Hi, Hi, sir. Good to see you. 
Now, the 205th Corps is one of the major formations of the Afghan National Army and, uh, and its, uh, uh, it, its structure it tended to be a whole bunch of disparate units loosely under some kind of control. And your job, the one you did magnificently, was to help to uh, see themselves as a coherent force under centralised direction and planning. Uh, one of the great challenges of working with uh, people in Iraq or Afghanistan is this uh, cohesion. You did a fantastic job and you've got high promise in the Australian Army. Well done. We turned to conspicuous service decorations and awarded the conspicuous service cross Captain Vanessa Ganley for outstanding achievement in the delivery of intelligence support to joint operations. Captain Ganley has demonstrated exceptional strategic and operational insight across two demanding intelligence appointments. She's worked tirelessly to enhance Australian Defence Force operations across the globe. Captain Ganley's foresight and efforts have improved the provision of intelligence support and force protection to our deployed personnel. Captain Vanessa Ganley awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Hello, how are you? Thanks, sir. Okay. Now, you are an intelligence specialist, and it's correct to say you've worked in multinational environments, and I'm here to tell you that your reputation could not be higher amongst our alliance partners. And now you're bringing that skill, uh, that know-how, and the energy into another very crucial um, area of intelligence uh, activity here in Australia. And uh, I, I think that uh, we will be the beneficiary uh, in enormous ways from your stewardship of the job you've got now. Well done. Cheers. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Colonel Peter Connolly, for outstanding achievement in enhancing the international engagement of the Australian Army. Colonel Connolly has made a major contribution to Army's capabilities and the Australian Defence Force's standing with global defence partners. Colonel Connolly's dedication and commitment has resulted in the proactive management and prioritisation of Army's international engagement strategy and his achievements have brought great credit to himself and to Australia. Colonel Peter Connolly awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Hi, Peter. Sir. That's Thank you, Your Excellency. Now we're looking at a field soldier, uh, CO of 1RAR. You're given the Distinguished Service Cross for your uh, service overseas. and. Uh, you were at that time part of a mentoring group, were you? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, now this uh, recognition of conspicuous service in, in a uh, non-warlike setting, but by the same token, you, you two, like uh, others who've appeared here, uh, have earned all of this recognition and you're a credit to a great military family. Thank you very much. Sir. Well done. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Duncan, for outstanding devotion to duty as the Operations Officer, Multinational Force and Observers, Sinai, Egypt. Colonel Duncan's leadership, management and meticulous planning were instrumental in guiding the Multinational Force through a period of unprecedented change. Colonel Duncan executed complex operations in a high security environment provided outstanding leadership to the Australian contingent and made a significant and enduring contribution to the force. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Duncan awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Apple. Hi, sir. Now, the Multinational Force and Observers started in 1979 or soon thereafter, after the Camp David Accords, and it's been going all these 
is pretty much under the radar. But most recently, there's been a very heightened threat against these conference building military forces who are very lightly armed and with very stringent rules of engagement. And it was your plan that brought them back into safer areas and uh, instituted modalities of operation where they were better protected. I've recently visited the MFO. I know all about your work. You're a credit to the Australian Army and you saved, arguably, saved lives in the way you uh, got them into a new posture. Well done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Colonel Philip Hoagland, for outstanding achievement as Director Military Personnel Policy in Defence People Group. Colonel Hoagland displayed proactive and innovative approaches in developing personnel policy. His dedication, coordination and consultative skills were crucial to accomplishing a large body of work in a politically dynamic environment. Colonel Hoagland's efforts have synchronised command arrangements and military personnel policy across the breadth of the Australian Defence Force. Colonel Philip Hoagland awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. How are you? Uh, you joined the Army in 94? 91, sir. 91, beg your pardon. And uh, you have served overseas in East Timor and in the Middle East area of operations. I think you're the OC of Force Logistics in 05. That was a pretty tight time, actually, and uh, a lot going on. Um, and now you find yourself in what some might regard as a fairly uh, uh, crunching bureaucratic activity. This is the uh, rearrangement of the, these 136 personnel-related regulations for people in the Army. Is that correct? But on the other hand, we rely on that to be done so that our people <coughs> exist in a modern framework of uh, governance and you've done that. And it was a bit like uh, modernising the King James Bible. Well done. <laughs> Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Colonel Sean Love, for outstanding achievement in enhancing the strategic, operational and tactical communications capability of the Australian Defence Force. Colonel Love has undertaken a range of senior roles within Army with great dedication. Colonel Love's knowledge, strategic acumen and commitment to duty has accelerated the development of the Australian Army's Mission Command and his achievements in the area of communications and information systems have been of the highest standard. Colonel Sean Love awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. G'day, how are you going? Good. There you go. There we go. We've well, got you in the basketball team. Yes. Um, you got the CSM when you were at uh, Conspicuous Service Medal when you were at the Staff College. Yes. Is that right? That's 2011. Now you, your work continues on the, uh, particularly in the communications sector, uh, to modernise Army's communications. Uh, that's a tremendously important job because we, we live on a smart, unfortunately, a very smart battlefield and it's only made uh, in our favour by having excellent communications and command and control systems. Sean, keep up the good work. Thanks. Cheers. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Colonel Penelope Soltry for outstanding achievement in providing legal advice to the Australian Defence Force, particularly in the areas of counter-terrorism, strategic operations and security. Colonel Saltry performed most admirably in her roles as Director of Operations and Security Law and as Director of Army Legal Services. In these appointments, she provided superior legal advice as well as contributing to the development of the Army Legal Corps. Colonel Saltry's accomplishments continue to generate significant efficiencies and benefits for the Australian Defence Force. Colonel Penelope Saltry awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, joined as a lawyer in '94. I did. Okay, and I think you work with special forces and the uh, land component and the joint services component. And you've also served in the Middle East. I have. Yeah, at a time when our people were deeply involved in this very, very uh, confused and challenging uh, communal environment where this person's a terrorist, and this is an innocent person, and you had to give them the appropriate legal framework, and you continue to do so. And uh, so, therefore, your contribution is extraordinarily powerful. Well done, and please keep up that work. Thanks very much, sir. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Wing Commander Leona Down. For outstanding achievement as the Project Manager of the Australian Defence Force Deployable Frozen Blood Project. Wing Commander Down's dedication and commitment to duty have resulted in the modernisation of Australian Defence Force operational transfusion policy and procedures. The advancements she achieved have set international benchmarks and provided the foundation for wider civilian standards. Wing Commander Down's efforts have also cemented Defence's relationship with the Australian Red Cross. Wing Commander Leona Down awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Good afternoon, how are you? Yeah, Excellency. Yeah. Now, I'm led to believe that the Frozen Blood Project, which is obviously for casualties, uh, uh, has put us in the absolute front of the rest of the world. So this is a technique that others are singing your praises about. Is that correct? It, um, it has been a uh, trailblazing project for Australia, most definitely. Yeah. And um, fundamentally, it will change the way we manage trauma on our um, mass casualties and overseas deployments and hopefully one day in remote and rural areas in Australia. You're probably thinking along technical lines, lots of people here are saying that'll save our boys and girls' lives. Well done. Most definitely. Thank Congratulations. you, Congratulations. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Petty Officer Andrea Kerr. For meritorious devotion to duty in personnel management and in particular in support of the commanding officer, HMAS Harmon. Petty Officer Kerr delivered a high level of service to Navy personnel during a challenging and dynamic posting as the commanding officer's secretary in HMAS Harmon. Her efforts in the role directly contributed towards improving Harmon's professional reputation and support to personnel welfare. Petty Officer Kerr's commitment to the local community and to veterans is also most noteworthy. Petty Officer Andrea Kerr awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. Hello, Pia. How are you? Good, sir. Now, you've been acting well above your rank and probably experienced, but uh, the captain has asked you to uh, often uh, be the first point of contact with some uh, or forms of people with all kinds of uh, welfare or uh, social challenges, very sensitive stuff, and you're the go-to person. That's obviously not to do with your rank or your time in the Navy, more the person you are. So that's a wonderful testament to how come you've been uh, identified for this award. The other thing I'd like to note is I think you've raised $50,000 for Legacy in recent years. Well done. Thank you so much. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Squadron Leader Simon Bartlett. For meritorious achievement in organisational development in establishing Number 20 Squadron and Royal Australian Air Force Base Woomera. Squadron Leader Bartlett demonstrated leadership and drive in the establishment of Number 20 Squadron and Royal Australian Air Force Base Woomera. His efforts in relationship building with the Indigenous landowners, his community engagement and his focus on achieving full operating capability were exemplary. 
Squadron Leader Bartlett's efforts have enabled the Royal Australian Air Force to develop and test crucial capabilities. Squadron Leader Simon Bartlett awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. So it just sounds a little mechanical, raised 20 squadron, but actually Warmera is one of the most sensitive areas for military activity in the whole of Australia because of the uh, ecological and social challenges uh, inherent in the military maintaining a, a very firm footprint there. So uh, I can imagine, because I've been to Warmera, uh, just how delicate yet uh, focused that mission was for you. And it was exemplified when a storm knocked out all of Woomera, not just the base, but the, the settlement. And the military had to step in immediately. Your people had to step in to re-establish essential services. And I think that combined with the remarks about your interaction uh, with the traditional owners of the land, um, and, I, and I would imagine also with the mine leases around the place, um, this has been uh, very much on your shoulders. And that's been recognised. Well done. Thank you, sir. Cheers. We turn now to Meritorious Service Awards and awarded the Public Service Medal, Mr Kevin Bradley, for outstanding public service through the digital preservation of audiovisual heritage material. Mr Bradley has been a driving force in the development of innovative approaches to providing Australians with access to the National Library's unique collection of oral history and folklore recordings. He's also been a significant contributor to the international guidelines for the preservation and digitisation of audiovisual archival material. Mr Bradley's commitment to the Australian community and to heritage preservation is to be applauded. Mr Kevin Bradley awarded the Public Service Medal. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, you joined the National Library in 1983. I did. And uh, I think you're uh, at one stage, maybe even now, uh, acting assistant DG I of the uh, You are still? I am the ADG now. There you are. All Thank right. I'll take off the acting. <laughs> Thank right. you. Uh, and uh, you're also in the International Association of Sound and Film Arch Archives. Sound and Audio Visual Archives. Sound, uh, well, you know you're now creating your own reality show. Uh, <laughs> and I'll talk to you about uh, That's right. You'll be able to preserve it. Uh, a lifetime in this uh, specialised area, and you must be such a profound expert by now. I'm imagining all the young people coming through that you've mentored, and I want you to keep going. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Awarded the Public Service Medal, Dr David Lloyd, for outstanding public service through professional contributions to the betterment of the Commonwealth's laws and to the benefit of national security. Dr Lloyd has been instrumental in improving the legislative framework that governs aspects of our national security. Throughout his career in the foreign affairs and trade portfolio, he's displayed the highest levels of integrity, professionalism and dedication to the public interest. Dr Lloyd's efforts have resulted in developments that will have long-lasting and tangible results for Australia. Mr Dr David Lloyd awarded the Public Service Medal. Hello there. Okay. Now, you, you did a PhD in uh, Battlefield tour Tourism. That's the short title. It yeah. goes on a bit. Yeah. What was the rest of the title? Um, pilgrimages and the commemoration of the Great War in okay. Australia, Canada and the United Kingdom. Battlefield Tourism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then you, you were Defence Legal Counsel 03 to 2011. That's right. And now you're doing that job in yes. the yes. Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Yes. A bit of a burst at Mallison's, then you saw the light and came into the public service. That's correct. Yep. Uh, you're one of those thoroughgoing professionals. You're the sort of turn to person when there's e ever uh, even the hint of a legal challenge in the activities of your department. Uh, you, you 
keep them honest, if I could put it that way, and a worthy recipient, and I'd love to read your book one day. <laughs> All the best. to the improvement of the lives of vulnerable members of the community. Mr McMahon has demonstrated professionalism, knowledge and leadership during the early development of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. His team oversaw the design of the agency's governance policies while providing valuable guidance into critical review and appeal practices. Mr McMahon's work has been vital in shaping the delivery of our public disability services to the benefit of so many. Mr. Robert McMahon awarded the Public Service Medal. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Now, in particular within the NDIS, I think it was uh, uh, one of the things you were very focused on was getting digital set-top boxes to people with disabilities so that uh, uh, the, the often people of reduced means uh, would not be suddenly um, uh, robbed of entertainment and news. And that was uh, something which within the NDIS was a big focus for you. It was a preceding arrangement, yes, yeah. but part of the same same thing. Yeah. And the other thing, uh, this is often just pops out on biographical notes, you're a life member of the RSPCA. That's correct, what sir. drew you into the RSPCA? I'm on the uh, board of the local RSPCA, but I was uh, in a, so, a life member in New South Wales. Okay, Alan Hawkes. Yes, yeah. that's right. With yeah. a name like Hawke, I guess he is on the RSPCA. That's right. But <laughs> all the best. Thank Congratulations. you, sir. <laughs> Awarded the Public Service Medal, Ms Nicole Middleton, for outstanding public service in the areas of project, property and security management. Ms Middleton has displayed commendable management skills in overseeing the logistical and administrative challenges that came with organising Brisbane's international G20 summit. Her organisational expertise has also been vital during repairs to the heritage listed John Gorton building. Ms Middleton has proven herself to be an asset to the public sector and her service is most noteworthy of our recognition. Ms Nicole Middleton awarded the Public Service Medal. Now the G20, over 40 events. Did you ever think you'd go mad? Mm, Often. <laughs> you may still be mad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was a mighty uh, effort by Australia to host uh, all of those delegations over, and the and the work up to it took years, not just a few weeks around the, the conduct of it. And you also did something like that with Sri Lanka for Chogham, didn't you? Yes, the Commonwealth that's right. Heads of Government meeting. Yes. Uh, was that a sort of advisory, or was it the same hands on? Uh, no, it's an advisory to have them establish um, for their yeah. successful hosting of the summit. Yeah. Well, there, there, there are people like you, not very many actually, salted around in the Australian Public Service who are go-to people when you've got something complex that has to go faultlessly. And that was G20. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Awarded the Public Service Medal, Ms Sandra Parker, for outstanding public service in the area of workplace relations. Ms Parker has made consistent contributions as an expert in the area of workplace relations and economic strategy. She successfully advised the government on legislative reforms across the areas of building and construction, road safety, emergency services and employee support. Ms Parker's capabilities have continued to produce work of great distinction. Ms. Sandra Parker awarded the Public Service Medal. Good afternoon. Here we go. I 
get the feeling you're all nervous. Just, <laughs> isn't everyone? Well, we're, I'm a bit nervous to be in your presence because I've looked at your CV and it is just, uh, you are one of these profound experts. You, your area of policy is obviously workplace relations, workplace health and safety. But then when one imagines the, the giant nature of the Australian workforce uh, and the, the policies that your department produces, uh, and here you are, you're feeling probably a little shy, and we're in awe of somebody who uh, is so up to date, so conscious of what are modern employment and industrial practices, that whichever uh, government is in power at the time leans so heavily on people like you, and you probably expect that and think that that's you know, the stuff of life. We admire you. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks very much. Awarded the Public Service Medal, Mr Trevor Thomas, for outstanding public service in the areas of foreign investment and superannuation. Mr Thomas has played a key role in the building of superannuation infrastructure in Australia. He's been an architect of the Prudential Framework for Superannuation Funds, as well as a lead contributor to the assessment of some of our largest and most contentious foreign investment cases. The beneficial impact, impact of Mr Thomas's work will be felt for many years to come. Mr Trevor Thomas awarded the Public Service Medal. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <coughs> well done. Thank you. Now, my notes tell me you retired in February this year from yes. the Treasury. Yes. You're obviously living locally? Yes. OK, but uh, I saw one of your highlights was that you had a uh, Treasury posting in Jakarta. Indeed. That was fun. It was. How long were you there for? Three years. OK, and what were you doing? You were the Treasury rep the in Treasury Southeast rep. Asia. Correct. And Jakarta simply because it's a, uh, Indonesia's a huge country? Or? Yes. And, yeah. uh, you know, significant trading partner to us and a uh, uh, very important uh, country yeah. to, to be represented in. Now, are you fully retired or keeping your hand in? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's early days. Anyway, after such a wonderful service uh, in a technical area of the Commonwealth's endeavour, I congratulate you and, and thank, you, uh, thank you for all those years of service. Thank you. To conclude today's investiture ceremony, we have one bravery decoration. An award of the bravery medal is Mr. Jim Bobolus, Mr. Nicholas Bobolus, and Mr. Timothy Bobolus. On the morning of 9 October 2016, Mrs. Jim, Nicholas, and Timothy Bobolus assisted in the rescue of two people from a burning vehicle in Downer, ACT. Jim, Nicholas and Timothy were at their home when they heard the sound of a crashing car. They immediately went outside and saw that a vehicle had collided with a tree. Two men were trapped inside the vehicle with smoke coming from under the bonnet and petrol leaking from underneath. Nicholas and Timothy quickly went to the passenger side of the vehicle where they pulled the smashed door aside and extracted the unconscious passenger and moved him to safety. Meanwhile, Jim used a fire extinguisher to smash the driver's window and attempted to extinguish the flames. He was soon joined by Nicholas and Timothy and after a struggle, they managed to open the vehicle's door and pull the driver from the car. The driver was extracted from the vehicle moments before the petrol caught fire and the vehicle was engulfed in flames. For their actions, Mr Jim, Mr Nicholas and Mr Timothy Bobolus are awarded the Bravery Medal. And then, as these gentlemen found, there was a life or death situation on their street near them. Uh, how many of us would uh, maybe just ring the emergency services uh, or maybe dither a bit? I don't know. 
These gentlemen didn't. Uh, family group, the brothers, rushed out and saw a need and immediately took action. The risk was already evident that this vehicle was about to blow and two people would lose their lives. And yet they went in and took the risk and saved the lives. This is what the Australian community values so much. You are very brave men. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the investiture proper. I now invite the Governor-General to address us. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal people, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present and to elders from other communities who may be with us today. Today we've recognised Australians who've made a tremendous contribution to this nation. We always finish uh, with the bravery where there's bravery awards to be made at the end because it gives us a chance to uh, sit and ponder uh, the, the reactions of people who are ordinary members of the community. It's been my privilege to invest those being honoured. Uh, I've been watching the pride on the faces of families and friends and the folks in the front row who are here sharing this occasion. To all of the recipients, we offer our deepest congratulations, our admiration and our respect. The ceremony today acknowledges your sacrifices and the work you've done without thought of recognition or personal gain. Uh, Australians are fortunate to benefit from your passion and your skills and your dedication, and it's fitting, really appropriate, that you've been recognised by our honours system. Honours do help to define and encourage and reinforce our Aussie goals and ideals. They identify role models and give the next generation something to aspire to. All of you now join the company of women and men whose actions have enriched our community and our lives. Your commitment to excellence and to your fellow citizens is something that we revere and admire. On behalf of all Australians, I thank you for your contribution. You inspire and motivate us to do our very best. I hope you'll remember this day as a day when your nation said thank you and well done. Congratulations. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, could I ask the guests just stay behind for a few moments while I ask all of the recipients at the back of the room to be escorted by our staff to the state entrance steps to join the Governor-General for an official photograph. And I'll be back with you momentarily to invite you to refreshments. Thank you. Mm -hmm.